All right, so in this one, we are going to set up custom domain names or a custom domain name for our app. That is, we want to have cur.com actually work instead of what it did, which was not work. So uh, <laughs> let's go ahead and really simply write in to Heroku. We'll do Heroku domains add www.tur.co. Excuse me, not tur, but cur.co. And then... Heroku, domains, add, cur.co. Center, and there we go. So we need to actually add in the, you have to verify your account as in enter a credit card to use domains. Unfortunately, that's the case. Um, that is something that we will do, pause real quick and do it, and then come back. Um, for you guys in particular, this is just a, an extra step that you don't necessarily have to do to get to a testing phase. If you aren't gonna go and have your domain name on it, you're gonna wanna make sure that the redirect goes to your Heroku app. You're just gonna have to change some of those settings in particular. Um, so what I'm gonna do is jump into Heroku.com into my actual dashboard, and I can actually see my app in here. There it is right there. And I'm now gonna confirm my actual account by adding in that credit card. Um, that's not something you guys have to do, but I'm gonna go ahead and pause it now and then come back when that's done. So I've added that credit card, so let's try the domains again, and we'll add it in. And now it's allowing that to happen. Notice it says configure your app's DNS provider to point to the DNS target cur.herokuapp.com. I'm also gonna add cur.co as well. Uh, so www. as well as cur.co. Um, so let's go ahead and jump in to our domain name and that is on name.com in our case. We do like using name.com, but I'm not gonna just jump in and just figure something out. Instead, I wanna look back at the custom domain and see what it is. Um, so the different configurations is showing it right here. So we have our different subdomain examples and then where our target's gonna be. So we wanna update our CNAME record. That's all we really need to do. So back into name.com, we'll go into DNS and we'll go to CNAME and in www we want our answer to be our app. So we add that record. And I'm also gonna add in like blog for some of these other tests that we had before. And CNAME blank, add record. So it's just .co, CNAME. And we said, I think we tested live. You know, just a few different tests to make sure that the subdomain redirect is working the way we expect. Um, so since I added those other ones, blog and live, I'm gonna go ahead and add them in to the app as well. So Heroku domains add and live.cur.co and Heroku domains add blog.cur.co. Okay, now let's go ahead and do Heroku open. I press enter and there it is. It takes me to cur.co. If you guys are seeing this, there's a really good chance that you can go to cur.co and it will work. If we go to blog.cur.co, we get this bad request. So it's possible that the do domain subdomain redirect is not working exactly like we want it to. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave it just at www. And then also let's see if the other subdomain without it, it does seem to redirect right back to where it needs to go. Um, so that's good. And we can actually test out the long domain stuff. So I'm going to jump into YouTube, into our channel, and I'm going to go ahead and just grab one of the domain lists here. And I'm going to go ahead and shorten off that URL. It's shortened. In this case, it says exists already. Why should this exist already? In fact, it should definitely not exist already because our production server should have a different database. So let's make that happen. Let's go into configuring Django apps. So if you do Heroku, Django, and database, you'll actually get a different one is configuring Django apps for Heroku, just slightly different. Actually, there's just more additional things on here. You can copy their example project, but we don't recommend that you do that. Instead, all we recommend is that you install Django database URL, and we're gonna go ahead and grab that into our project here. So pip install DJ database URL. And then we're gonna just go off of their update for this in particular. So we're gonna copy this and go into production. So our production file. 
and underneath databases, I'm just gonna paste that stuff in here. So this right here, you wanna make sure it's underneath databases because we have this default here and this is giving us all of the things that we want. So that should actually handle our production side of things. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do pip freeze and requirements.txt again. Um, so now my Heroku app has the database URL stuff set up, but I might not actually have a database yet. You can also do con uh, the connections to be lower to uh, improve the performance of your Django application if there's certain things uh, that we have. Um, so going back into the Python one, we can actually add on our Heroku database or any particular database that we would like. So in this case, I'm just gonna add in the default and it's a Postgres SQL database. And we're gonna come in here into terminal, we're gonna add it on. And this is now adding on that database. This database has been created and is available. So there it is. That's everything that we will got and need to actually make sure that our um, database is there and working. So now we do get status and we do get add and then we do commit it and update database and requirements, get push Heroku master. So since we're creating a brand new database, if you remember back to when we deleted a database, we have to run a few commands to make sure that it works on Heroku and that those commands we will run uh, in just a moment once it actually finishes uploading and now it's finished doing all that. So we're gonna go Heroku run python manage.py migrate. And we're probably gonna see an error here for a very specific reason. We changed the database to being Postgres SQL, but we didn't install the Python package to handle Postgres SQL. Um, so we actually need to update our module or our requirements to have the py or excuse me, PSY COPG2 module. Um, so to install it locally, I could just try pip install and then that module, but you're probably gonna see some errors. In fact, I'm just gonna cancel it right now. The reason you would see errors has everything to do with not having Postgres SQL installed on your local computer. We aren't going to install it in this one. It just goes into too much stuff. So if, if you wanna know more about that, go to joincfe.com slash projects and look for the database project. And that will actually go through and show you um, how to do Postgres SQL. But for us, we're just gonna go into our requirements because this is for live stuff. So inside of our requirements, I'm gonna go ahead and add in the module that we need. And it's gonna be greater than or equal to, I'll do 2.6.2. .2, um, or we could just do equals equals to. So when I did that installation, it was looking for that one in particular. Um, but yours, you could, you could just write that down and all of these uh, requirements should work okay for us. Um, so now I'll do pip, uh, I'll do git status and git add, git commit, update requirements for that, oops. Uh, Postgres, and then we'll do git push Heroku master. And now hopefully it'll work. We're gonna pause it and come back if, if it doesn't. Okay, looks like it installed successfully. So now we should be able to do python manage.py migrate. Oops, we wanna do Heroku, not Python, but Heroku run python manage.py migrate, press enter. This should allow us to create that new database I think that it will, and it looks like it has. Perfect, that's exactly what we wanted to see happen. And then I'll do Heroku run. Uh, we can do bash now, so bash being into the shell. This will allow us to run all of our commands just directly on there instead of doing Heroku run for each and every command. Um, so I already did migrate, but I can run python manage.py migrate again in here and it's just gonna be slightly faster than before. And I can also do python manage.py make migrations. Uh, realistically though, you're not gonna make your migrations on your Heroku app. You'll do them locally and then push them with the migrations made. And you would just really be running migrate on your Heroku app. And I also wanna create a super user because we've got a new database in here. So I definitely wanna create a new super user. And I'll just say CFE for this one. I'll leave the email blank. 
and then I'll just write a password. And our super user was created successfully. So now I can exit out of this just by typing exit and we'll clear everything out. Now we'll do Heroku open and this should take us to cur.co. We can put in our URL here now. We'll put in that YouTube playlist. I'll hit shorten and success, it was created. So now if I click on this, so I'll go ahead and open it up in a new tab. Should redirect me, it did it. And we can also now go back into this to see how it's doing by going to new, paste that in, hit shorten. And we see that we've got one count here. Really good. I can also log in here, or at least I should be able to. Whoa, Django looks weird. This is because we didn't set up our static files and that's okay. Um, we set up static files in so many other projects that you can definitely learn how to do it. Um, no problem otherwise. So I'm just gonna go ahead and come in here. I see my URLs and there we go. So cur.co actually works. It's a real functioning site. And if I go to a page that does not exist, I get this not found error. Um, so that's something that I am just gonna leave as is. But in, in future reference, what you would wanna do is actually create a template. So if we look at our TriJango 1.10 series here, we would wanna create a template for the 404 and 500 errors. So I added these outside of the context of the video so I could show you how to do it here. So inside of our Cur app, right? Go into source, templates, and we can add those templates in. So I'm gonna go ahead and just grab the 500 one, go to raw and save the file. So you could do file, save page as, and then go to Cur, source, templates. There's 500, that's a 500 error. And then we wanna go into 404. So we'll go back, 404 error, as in a page not found error. Raw, file, save page as, and in the root of the template file here. And there we go. So we did that, we do git status, git add period, git commit, error pages, and then git push Heroku master. It's pushing it. So now we can go and test it out. Uh, it's not quite there yet. Um, so I'm gonna let that happen. Uh, but I wanna mention something here. Look how easy it was to make changes. So I added a couple files here. I added them to Git, and then I pushed them to Heroku. Of course, I could test locally, and I probably should in many cases. Uh, but in this case, I just ran it and did it that way. You can test locally both ways. So Python manage.py run server allows you to test locally. But so does Heroku local web that also allows you to do that locally as well. So both of them are ways to test it specifically. Now, if I refresh here, I should see page not found and I do. Um, that's really good. So that's exactly how I wanted it to come out. And now I'm just gonna have one more short URL and that is joincfe.com slash enroll if you want to take your Django project skills to that next level. We're gonna see you in one more video just to kind of thank you guys. Otherwise, um, if you stop now, thanks so much for watching. I'm so stoked that you guys got this far and it's gonna be interesting to see where cur.co goes from here. We'll see you guys in the next series, hopefully.